Hello everybody. I'm waiting for my hair to get cut, waiting for a, you know, message from Haircut Place. But anyways, got an idea to talk about training to meet an end goal. And for most of us civilians out there, that's to be more efficient with the firearm and be able to handle certain conflict and deal with, uh, you know, pretty much everyday life and be able to carry out everyday life, but it, be able to switch it on uh, when necessary. Uh, so how are you going to find training that will accommodate that? Well, I can tell you this. I don't believe that it's by taking a bunch of pew-pew courses where basically you're running and gunning or doing a shitload of competition. There's nothing wrong with it. However, when people mainline it, it's like a drug. You know, with moderation, it can be quite helpful. Uh, but, you know, you just don't want to mainline it, you know? But anyways... Uh, with that said, what kind of training courses could you do? Well, in my opinion, I think that it's very valuable for people to who don't don't have this kind of experience, like uh, military or law enforcement, where they have to deal with a uh, civilian population and a hidden enemy. Uh, they don't really know how to switch it on, and even some people in the military don't know. They push papers or whatever, and there's nothing wrong with that. But anyways. Um, there, there's training courses that you can do. You can introduce yourself to these kind of conflicts by active shooter courses, uh, you know, force on force active shooter courses, or just general force on force to begin with. Uh, expose yourself to the concept that you're not shooting at paper. You're not practicing on paper to shoot at paper and they're not going to stand still. You are going to have barriers uh, such as arms and stuff between uh, you if you are going up against someone who's armed. And if there's somebody with a knife, they're not just going to stand still. They're, uh, they're, their objective is to get close to you in close distance. This can really help with uh, getting an understanding that we, we don't have the luxury of staying still. And some of the stupid sayings you hear out there, you'll never walk back, you should never walk backward in a gunfight. These people probably have not been in a gunfight, or they come up with these arbitrary principles based on uh, whatever you who they heard and they wanted to parrot it. But just a small sample of my opinion on that. Uh, but there's time and place for everything, right? So, situation dictates. It's kind of like uh, how they say God's will to you know cover everything, but <laughs> in the in the religious community. Uh, but, uh, with that said, how about getting tactical training? How about places like One Shepherd or Max Velocity Tactical? How the heck could that even help? Learning how to clear rooms, do reconnaissance and stuff like that, that absolutely does cross over because the basic principle of it, you may not be in multicam or, you know, in woodland or OD and, you know, have everything on the outside, but the basic principles remain the same. You have to plan prepare for those contingencies and stuff like that, but absolutely don't affect your mobility or your, you know, concealability because your conceivability is your civilian uh, attire. Your concealability is making sure that you have a weapon that is both effective, but also not sitting there printing. Like most people who carry appendix, they think they can carry a skin tight t-shirt. Well, I see the damn gun and you're not really keeping a low profile there. So, yeah, it, it, but yeah, I like to be more in the area or in the realm of Silent Guardian. But anyways, tactical courses can teach you a lot of things. They can teach you to be a leader, how to interact with people, and that can help you in your work life too, in your everyday life, maybe even with family, understanding how to communicate with people, how to plan things. It could help you just planning your trip to Hawaii with your wife and kids, whatever. Uh, just understanding that if something could go wrong, it will go wrong, and planning accordingly or you know you get an idea that just because you think it's good gear doesn't mean that it's actually good gear for everything so uh you know kind of like uh, you'll learn uh, during uh, some of these courses that open top mags that are just friction uh, held in on a on a battle belt it's probably not going to hold that well you're probably going to leave a yard sale behind and that's what I see. A lot of people are like, well, I would use open top. I would be very fast at my reloads. Well, speed isn't the issue. It's consistency and the ability to reload in any position. 
And when everything goes wrong, like, hey, maybe the the bolt wasn't held back on the last round. And everybody always trains for the bolt to be held back and be able to use the bolt release, but yeah. So this can cause an adoption of different techniques and stuff, and that's great. You're thinking for yourself based on your own experience, and that's the point. You're getting a lot of different exposures to a lot of different things that give you a lot of experience in something that's very valuable. You're understanding your your place and your interaction with the firearm and how you can actually be an asset and how you can actually be helpful. So, you know, get exposure to that. Take these, you know, advanced courses. Learn how to run and gun, how to how to be more efficient in your movements and stuff. That's absolutely great. Uh, learning to be a little bit more efficient in, you know, uh, basically your carry system. Have the have the baseline, or, but don't interfere with your ability to be comfortable because that's 90% of the reason a lot of these people that I know that uh, carry appendix with an extendo mag and armor and, uh, you know, the big old threaded barrel and, they, uh, and a full-size gun, they, they don't actually take their guns with them everywhere. Uh, so that's just kind of how it is. But, I mean, you've got, there's everything is a calculated risk, right? That's why I'm carrying a shield right now. I'm I'm making a calculated risk. Comfort, there's not really much that goes on here in Wasilla that's really a big issue. You know, that, that it's not really too concerning for me. Would I like to be able to carry a, a bigger gun that gives me a little bit more comfort? Sure. However, you know, we all make calculated risk. We all make sacrifices. I'm carrying a gun regardless instead of leaving my Glock 23 behind and having nothing. So, with that said, I'm going to leave it there. You know, try to make sure that your training is meeting that end goal. And, you know, make sure that you're taking from your training what is valuable instead of just worrying about, is this training going to make me look like John Wick when I'm practicing on the range? Because guess what? John Wick is fake. If you even look at any of those scenes as an experienced uh, shooter, you're going to know that he would have been marked within five minutes, uh, within the within the first probably 10 seconds when he was uh, in his own house. You know, lack of use of cover, just uh, uh, terrible. They, and plus, there, there really wasn't much resistance <laughs> from the bad guys. But anyways, I got to cut this video short. It's already too long anyways. But anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And you guys have a good one.